All right, previously we imported data from our MySQL database to Hive, and we created a movies table in Hive that contains the movies table data from our MySQL instance. And we took a little peek and saw that it's actually in there. So let's go the other way. Let's actually import this data back from Hive into MySQL into a new table. So to do that, we first need to understand where this data in Hive actually resides. So remember, Hive is just a schema on read sort of deal. The actual data itself is just stored as a plain old text file somewhere. And all Hive is doing is imparting structure to it when it's being read. So let's go back to the HDFS view and I'll show you where that actually lives. Go to the files view. And on, uh, on Hortonworks, it actually lives under the apps directory under Hive, and from there there's the warehouse directory. Now, on other distributions, it might be under user Hive or users Hive, but on Hortonworks, it's apps Hive, okay? And you can see here, there's a movies folder underneath the warehouse folder, and that's where the actual data lives. So we can actually take a look at that. This is where the, the Hive um, table for movies is actually stored and managed by Hive itself. And you can see here the raw data is in there. Notice that there aren't any commas delimiting, delimiting it though. Hive actually uses low ASCII values like one and two and three to delimit its data. That way we don't run into trouble when we have actual commas in the data itself. For example, here, usual suspects comma the, if that was a comma delimited format, that wouldn't actually work now, would it? So, but that's where the data actually lives. So remember, oh, I didn't want to download it, but if you go to apps, Hive Warehouse Movies, that's where this data actually lives. So we're going to need that to actually use Scoop to import it back in. So let's go back to our terminal prompt here and do just that. Now, when you're going to import data, or rather export using Scoop into a MySQL database, you need to actually make sure that the table exists ahead of time to receive that data. So let's go and set that up. Log into MySQL again, mysql-u root-p, and the password again is Hadoop. And we were going to use the use the movie lens database just like that. Okay, and we're going to create table exported movies, and that's going to contain the fields ID, which is an integer, a title field, which is a var car two fifty five. That just means a string up to two hundred fifty five characters long and a column called release date that is of date format. Okay, so now we have a table that should be all set up to receive the data that we want. Okay, let's uh, actually exit and try and do that. So we're gonna say scoop export because we're exporting from the cluster to MySQL dash dash connect jdbc colon mysql colon slash slash local host slash movie lens again telling it to connect to the movie lens database on my mysql instance running on localhost again we're going to do dash m1 because we only want one mapper because we're only on one system specify the driver com.mysql.jdbc.driver with a capital d and we are going to put it in a table called exported movies. That's the, mo the table that we just created a moment ago. And finally, we're going to say dash dash export dash dir. And this is going to be where it's going to get the data from on our cluster and, and push, push it into the exported movies table in MySQL. So remember, on our HDFS file system, that was under slash apps slash hive slash warehouse slash movies. And finally, we need to tell it how that data is delimited. And again, with Hive, the default delimiter is going to be ASCII value one. To do that, we say dash dash input dash fields dash terminated dash by single quote backslash 0001 backslash. Okay, so let's double check this for typos. I think everything looks okay. Let's kick it off and see what happens. Off it goes, and just like when we were importing data while we're exporting, it's also going to kick off a bunch of mappers using MapReduce to actually do it. And we told it to only use one mapper just to keep things as efficient as, efficient as possible. And it is kicking that mapper off right now. 
and we're done. So it looks like it worked. Let's actually take a peek in MySQL and see if it's there. So let's log back into MySQL, mysql uroot-p, password is Hadoop, use movie lens, and let's take a peek. Select star from exported underscore movies, uh, limit 10, we'll just look at the first 10 rows. Check it out, it's back in there. So we have successfully exported data from Hive, from a table stored and managed by Hive, into MySQL, into a table that we made. So again, key point there is that you need to create that table ahead of time. It's not going to create it for you, but once you have the correct table structure in place, you can use Scoop to go the other direction as well. So that can again come in handy from, from a practical standpoint if you need to expose your data to a database that's more well suited for OLTP. So sometimes you'll be doing some huge operation using Hive or some other tool on your cluster, but the output of that operation might be small enough to fit on a single database, right? So Maybe you want to export that to a MySQL instance or a PostgreSQL or whatever, right? Uh, Oracle, anything. And that way you can actually unleash your data warehouse people on it that are more familiar with traditional databases, or you can actually launch a service that talks to that database under the hood and actually exposes that data to the world. So very useful applications of actually exporting your data from your cluster to a standalone database. And that's how you do it, using Scoop. Fun stuff. So there you have it. That's how you actually import and export data to and from a traditional relational database to your Hadoop cluster. When we're done here, type in exit and we'll get back to our prompt. And from there, we can close everything out if you want to. All right. So there you have it. We talked about making your Hadoop cluster look like a MySQL database or a SQL database using Hive. And we also talked about using your Hadoop cluster with a real MySQL database as well. Kind of two different directions there. Next, Let's talk about NoSQL. So sometimes you actually want to expose your data in a way that's more amenable to real-time queries. And there's a bunch of ways to do that and also ways of integrating Hadoop with systems that are more real-time in nature. So let's dive into that in our next section.